Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Safety first. So, how are you? Hope you're well. Are you on your way to work? Are you on your way home from work? I'm on my, my, my way to work, as usual. I thought I'd do a quick uh, update. If you watched uh, one of the previous videos, you'll know that uh, I had a patient who made an appointment for a checkup and then couldn't come and tried to cancel within the last sort of 48 hours, which is a no-no. I mean, you can they can cancel, it just means they lose their deposit. And then he then got so upset about that that uh, he did a chargeback on his uh, credit card because he paid on the credit card. I think I'll have to check whether it was on the credit card or a debit card. It may be that if it was on a credit card that that, that means something further down the line. But anyway, we'll have a, we'll have a look. So um, anyway, it took three months and then, or, and then it always takes more than three months. And then they came back with a thing that said uh, that the, the card company, his card issuer had sided with him and uh, that they are going to give him his money back. And the reason was that the goods or product, the product or service was not as advertised, was not provided as advertised. Um, presumably on the, um, on the, you know, he's saying, I, you know, I paid for a checkup, but I, I never received it because I cancelled it and I never received it, therefore they shouldn't have charged me for it. So, obviously th this has got implications for us. I mean, not major implications because honestly in the like the three years we've been doing this, is the only one who's ever done it. Uh, but, you know, I just don't like loose ends. I don't like thinking that somebody could do it again. So um, we have to decide how to respond to this. Now, there is, as always, you know, and this is why people who are successful in business are successful, is because they've got good judgment and, and uh, you have to exercise your judgment all the time on things like this. So for example, the one approach would be to do nothing and say, okay, it's extremely rare, um, you know, and time consuming to take it any further. We lost the judgment and, uh, <clears throat> That's just, uh, you know, we tried, we failed. Okay, fair enough, right, just write them. Get on with something else. The other way of doing it would be to, um, now, now the problem with that approach, right, is, uh, and the problem always is, yeah, why don't you just force me off the road, you plonker. So, so the other, uh, the other way of doing it, I mean, the, 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 no, the problem with that approach is this, right? First of all, it could happen again, right? So it's like, um, you know, you've got a leaky bucket. <laughs> and okay, so for the time being, it's carrying enough water for you, but it's still, it's still got a little leak. Secondly, it could apply to something much larger. Someone could, for example, pay, I don't know, 1800 pound for a set of dentures and, uh, and, then charge that back and then the credit card could say well that's that you know they were not happy with that product or service therefore it's going to be charged back so then um, you've got also I mean the reason why you know the, the, the uh, staff room when we had a little staff meeting over yesterday a pop-up a pop-up staff meeting we have pop-up staff meetings and they're done when no one's in for about 15 minutes or so. And, uh, you know, nobody's really, really busy. Then what I'll do is I'll say, right, we're having a staff meeting. And so everyone comes and sits down by the desk and we just have a quick chat about uh, usually an issue or, or a couple of issues that are current. And, and I recommend these, I recommend that approach uh, far better than the alternative, which is to say, oh, well, we're going to have a, staff meeting in the lunch hour every third Thursday of the month uh, because for a start staff don't like having 
staff meetings in their lunch hour. It's unpaid time and time that they uh, should be allowed to relax, not, not do admin. And uh, secondly, uh, all this, you know, what was on the agenda last and what's the agenda? Who's going to keep a record of what was said and what was decided, you know? All this is more appropriate for a large corporate enterprise, not a dental surgery with one dentist, one, one uh, you know, two nurses, one of, of which acts as a receptionist half the day. So they were sort of like, well, we can't understand it because we make it quite clear in our terms and conditions that uh, you're, you know, if you, if you cancel or don't turn up after the uh, deadline for cancellation, then you've done your deposit. Well, the card company doesn't see it like that, apparently. And the reason why they don't is because obviously they're making a lot of commission offer people using their credit cards and so they that's why they come up with things like well the, the direct debit guarantee for example was necessary before people would start accepting direct debits but in giving someone else the ability to dip into your bank account and uh, take money out of your bank was out of your bank account was was only acceptable to the public when they were told that if for any reason they were unhappy with any money that had been taken from their account, the bank would, no questions asked, immediately refund the money and then and then work out afterwards what, you know, then it's up to you and the person who took the money as to whether or not uh, they should have done it or not. And they're very uh, keen to make sure that uh, they limit the type of people that can set up direct debits. For example, we, we, uh, had a direct debit arrangement with the uh, GDPA members and then uh, all of a sudden HSBC just said we're going to cut you off you know we're going to you're not going to be allowed to do direct debits anymore and so our only alternative was to um, was annual billing or standing orders and standing orders are a kiss of death for any association because you then uh, remind people to put their standing orders up uh, because every time you send out a reminder Five percent of the people cancel, and that more than makes up for any money that you might get from the putting the standing orders up. Anyway, they couldn't understand why the card company had come down in favour of the card member. <laughs> Actually, you know, I'm being cynical. Of course, I'm thinking, well, well, of course they are because this is their way of sort of saying, yeah, don't worry about using your credit card because. Uh, if you do decide to claim any money back, then we'll let you we'll let you have it. But then, <clears throat> so we felt we've fallen. We haven't fallen at the first hurdle, but we've failed at the first hurdle. So then, <clears throat> the same way as a direct debit guarantee, if you uh, if you're collecting money through direct debit and someone doesn't pay, it's usually because their money their account's empty or something or. They're changing accounts or changing banks or whatever. <coughs> you then get in touch with them and say your account, you know, your uh, direct debits uh, failed. So can we, uh, we'll charge you twice next month or this is what the, the dental companies do. The dental plans like uh, Denplan and DPAS, they set up direct debits and then if someone doesn't pay, say in May, they'll take twice the payment out in June or whatever. So, you know, in a way, of course, the card company was going to find in favour of the card company customer because they want to maintain his confidence in his credit card and he doesn't, you know, and I think what they've done is I think that they've ruled in his favour for their own reasons, not because they've, they've read the evidence and decided that he's, he's in the right. Uh, in fact, I think personally, I think anyone, objective third party who reads the evidence would decide that he's in the wrong but the question is how for example are people like EasyJet able to take deposits for flights and then and then not get those charged back if the person fails to attend or fails to uh, uh, fails to uh, you know cancel the flight how are they able to not fall foul of just getting a charge back is it a simple legal difference in our terms and conditions? 
or is it that they are a larger company than us and therefore Visa or MasterCard will be much less likely to muck them about you know and and think well who is who is who is this is one dental surgery what the hell if we find against them unfairly what the hell are they going to do because there's no appeal against it you go you go to uh well maybe there is an appeal i mean what happens is your card company your merchant services company appeals to the uh the card company and then and your merchant services company doesn't have an appeal so uh, but it may be that i i do have an appeal but anyway um the next step logically would be just to make a small claim money claim online or whatever it's called these days for the money and it may be that um money claim online will find in our favor because they'll perhaps they might take a more objective look and not without this sort of uh, problem of needing to be you know having to retain the customer etc and so and they might look at our terms and conditions and say yes yeah, it states quite clearly if you cancel after five o'clock on the you know two days before then you've done your deposit so that's option two option one is do nothing option two is make a small claim now it is a small it's a very small claim these days it's 78 quid it's a small claim but the point is that this money claim online is designed to deal expeditiously with small claims like that yeah all right just because you think you're a brand's hatch and uh, and so and also you are protected from his legal fees so for example if you you know if i issue a claim against him and he takes advice from a solicitor which costs him 250 quid and i lose i'm not liable to pay his legal fees of 250 quid so it makes it quite easy and quite convenient there is a fee obviously to file it oh, i should imagine it's in the order of i don't know 30 quid or something and that stops people claiming for 10 you know <laughs> that's i think if you win you do get your fee back so in fact uh, but if you don't then you've done the debt and the fee so it's probably not worth uh, taking a chance to claim back 10 pence for example but <clears throat> i minded to go down this route because uh, for a couple of reasons i mean first of all like uh, i said to the staff yesterday he's probably doing an indian war dance around the fire next to his teepee thinking that's shown him you know because don't forget this is the bloke who said he was going to ruin our reputation by giving us a one star <coughs> a google review which he did do but which um we were able to post a comment saying that we know who this person is and, and basically he's uh, uh he's uh you know this is a frivolous and vexatious complaint because um uh, he owes money and uh, so that's that didn't really work and uh, also because we've got 500 other five star reviews and so uh, people are not stupid you know you tend to disregard the most glowing and the least glowing of all the reviews don't you and just look at the the, the, the bulk you know the average um, sort of uh, uh, feedback anyway so so he did that and then and then he said he was going to charge back the money which he's, he's done and i dare say he now thinks that he's been successful and that's the end of it but it's actually not at all the end of it because the next thing that's going to happen is uh he's going to get a court document stating that he owes us we allege that he owes us 78 quid plus uh uh the, the service fee and um and what's his defense now there is a trick at this time of year that you can use which is a dirty trick and i don't know whether to recommend it but you can because i don't think there's a time limit on this 
I can delay it by a few weeks or a month or two and arrange for the summons to arrive somewhere around 15th of December. <coughs> Which means it's going to upset his Christmas somewhat. But I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, do you think Angry would stoop to serving a summons on someone on December the 22nd when the courts are about to shut and there's nothing you can do about it? No, of course not. No. No, of course not. So, <laughs> no. So, <clears throat> anyway, so that, that's what we're, we're minded just to assume uh, for a civil claim now for the money. All the evidence is prepared. It was all bundled up for Visa or MasterCard, whoever it was. There's very little work involved. It's just a case of... Uh, uh, printing out and still doing it's, it's all done online now and um, and then we'll see how we go now if the court says no no then it might be worth our while then to just have a chat with the solicitor and it shouldn't cost more than a few hundred quid for them to draw us up a, a terms and conditions which is you know a bit more like easy jets bit more like British Airways and states quite clearly that uh, it's a deposit, non-refundable deposit. <coughs> <coughs> I think I think that's maybe where we went wrong. I think uh, instead of saying it's a charge for a checkup, which you have to pay whether you, you get the checkup or not, which is what uh, Visa said was an unfair condition, if you like, Hello, it's a Kestrel. They fly along the... Uh, it's actually... It looks like it's flying along with a car, but it's hovering. <clears throat> but, um... So, what it might be better to, to define it explicitly as a non-refundable deposit against a checkup, which if you then don't don't avail yourself of, then, then you've done your deposit, you know. So that may be where we made our mistake. Anyway, that's the whole point about the legal profession. We'll uh, see what we can do. But that, but that was a third option, which was anyway just to go straight to a lawyer and say our terms and conditions have let us down with visa, um, and uh, how can we improve them? Now the point is that the reason why we're not going to phase three straight away is because um, it may be that uh, any any terms and conditions wouldn't have worked with Visa because as I say I think their primary objective <clears throat> is not an objective can hello someone's tried to knock the war memorial down I don't think it's an objective consideration of the facts but more a, an objective consideration of their their profits so don't, there's no need to go running straight to a solicitor because I say, and this is a weird thing. I mean, it may it's happened once, it may never happen again, and so it could be like a storm in a teacup. But anyway, that's an update. I'm not going to keep you on the on the line. Just to let you know where we are with everything. It's Friday, so I only work Friday morning. My cousins are coming over. For a free checkup, and uh, then we're going out for lunch, so we're going to have a very pleasant day today. I'm just in the middle of uploading another couple of videos. So, <laughs> quite one with what to do, if, how to deal with a patient who's a cow, I think is one of them. So, much the amusement of the stall. But who never watch them? Who never watch them? So. So what do I care? Let's have another go. See if I can get somebody else to beat me who thinks they're Nigel Mansell or Graham Hill, who's far, far more my generation. Anyway, I'll, I'll keep you up to date. And I've done a few money claims online, so it's not, it's not at all difficult, especially if the evidence is all wrapped up for you anyway. And... Uh, they don't take long, they, as I say, they're quite cheap and quick to do. 
but um, you know, hopefully it's going <clears> to <throat> help <clears throat> piss on his campfire when he receives it, because he'll be in jeopardy again, won't he? And he'll be in jeopardy with a court that is hopefully uh, yeah. not um, biased one way or the other, rather than the card company that you know he can probably be he can he can rely upon to sort of look after him as a consumer. Even if a consumer does something which is, you know, extremely unreasonable, the trend these days is to <coughs> make them whole again. Sunday papers are full of uh, stories about, because the banks have put down, well, they've limited the amount that they're prepared to re, the, to compensate people for, where the, the people have been complete idiots, and someone rung up and said, uh, someone's taking some money out of your bank and we think it's a it's a bank member of bank staff so we want you to go to a different branch and transfer all your money into this other account which is a safe account which happens to be their account and they keep them on the phone the whole time and they transfer some woman transferred 410,000 and she's there saying that the bank should give her her money back I mean she's she's gone to considerable length to make sure that the bank can't keep her safe and <laughs> done all her money and now she wants the bank to give it to her back and I'm sure that's what this patient was like he was like I've, I've effed up I've sent my 78 quid has gone because I, I had to cancel a short notice and I didn't think I'd have to but in the end I had to it was a gamble I took and lost and now I want my money back what are you going to do? Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> that Porsche belongs to the hairdresser next door, right? And she's parked there because that Mini is parked in her spot. And because that Mini's parked in her spot, she's parked in my spot, which has forced me to park in a normal spot which I don't mind, but she could have parked in a normal spot. So what she's done now is she's just, she's gonna say, well, that's not a reserved place. Anybody can park there. That's true. But if you wanna piss someone off, that's how to do it. Do you know what I mean? Just, that's, that is, but then that, that's the sort of people that are here. Present company accepted. They are, they're a bunch of second division business people who, who can't afford their own premises which I suppose includes me. But um, that's, that's, that's just typical of the zero sum thinking that goes on here. If someone's got my spot, I'm gonna nick your spot. Therefore, you're the one that, you're the loser, you know? All right, okay. Well, sorry to finish on a bit of a downer there. Someone's nicked my parking spot, but never mind. I'll, um, I'll um, keep you up to date and uh, talk to you soon. Bye.